But I think it, it's important for who we are is to hey, be able to have a conversation that has a beginning and a middle and an end, a conversation that you know will, will take you on a ride, on a journey. Mm -hmm. And that's what the best conversations do. They grab you, you know, and then you hear the music and you, and you hear the sense of the rhythm and, and it takes it and, and goes and builds and, and every aspect of human conversation gets exercised. You know, I, I will have a conversation here with someone, and literally, I, and if it's two people, I can literally sort of push back like this. Literally, a kind of visual sense of, you know, brothers and sisters, listen, they're saying interesting things. Right. There's and, a new, and you don't need me. Yeah. I also believe in any conversation about conversation, the more you know, the better you are. On the other hand, with this proviso, if it somehow uh, stifles you from being spontaneous, mm -hmm. then it's a hindrance, yeah. what you yeah. know. You cannot be hostage to the information you have and your own research. If, in fact, you go forward and you're only going to discuss which is within the bounds of this paper, you know, that's your own information, then the conversation will be limited. But if, in fact, you know, you can say, I'm going to use what you say, like, it's like tennis, the best conversations are in part are like tennis, because if we're playing tennis, where I hit the ball affects how you will hit it back to me, where you will hit it back or not. You know, if I drive it down the line to your backhand, you know, that will affect the shot that you have. What I value as significant, the supreme importance of the right question. Mm. I've had people come to this program and say to me, you know, every great book begins with a question. You know, you know, the, the novel begins with a question, mm -hmm. but it ends with 13 chapters. Right. 